I have been working my way through this rather large stack of composition notebooks that I picked up and I've altered them one by one. If this is your first time visiting my channel, this is about the 15th or 16th composition notebook that I've altered. And in this particular one, I am going to utilize a mason jar lid. My husband cans and I find that once we eat what he has canned, we throw away this particular piece of the mason jar. I began to save them, thinking that there's some things I could use in my channel. Once again, welcome to Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I enjoy creating journals. If this is your first time here, I hope you will hit that subscribe button and join me. And if you are a return visitor, I certainly appreciate you. That like button does help my channel. Of course, the notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. So to get started on this project, I did two things. I took two of these lids, I hammered one down flat, and one I left intact as is. The one that I am utilizing for this particular journal is the one that I left intact as is. I am using a metallic gold paint and just covering the mason jar lid. And I'm covering both, but as I said before, I'm utilizing the one that I did not hammer down for this particular video. So I'm going to let that paint dry or speed up the drying a little bit with my blow dryer. And once everything is dry, I am going to come back with a second color over the top of the gold and over the um, entire piece, which is a heavy body raw umber. And I will just coat that completely and I will let that paint dry. And now that I have a good base of paint and it is dry, I'm coming back with a fine grade sandpaper and just lightly going over the top to expose some of the gold underneath. The whole purpose of the sandpaper is to kind of scruff everything up and kind of start that grungy look. Now that I have all of that dry and everything that might possibly come off in the paint arena it set into place, I'm coming back with some of the Finnabar texture paste that had, that's that real gritty texture paste that comes in those little patina kits. And I will link everything that I use here in this video. Um, I will put it in my Amazon storefront, which the link for my storefront is in the description. But I pulled out the ones that had not dried up. And I did find that I, when I went through, some of the jars had just dried and were not usable anymore. And I don't know if there's anything I can do to, to revive those, but I pulled out the ones that still were moist and available for use or were not dried up, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I put the brown on first. I put this mustard uh, yellow on and I'm going to come back with some rust color. This is what the this one is called is rust. And I'm not going about this in any controlled, thought out process. I'm just using what I have on hand and, and putting it on and hoping that the result will be good. So the one really bright color that I have of this is this peacock blue texture piece. So I am pulling that out and I'm loving what that is doing. And again, I don't want you to think that <clears throat> I am, have definitely thought this through and this was a planned event. I am just sharing with you what happens when you play. So this is what uh, the mason jar lid has turned out to look like using the Finnabar texture pieces that have been sitting in my studio for month after month after month without being used. 
I found this um, little embellishment that was a Tim Holtz embellishment, and I am going to put that onto this mason jar lid by drilling holes through the lid and attaching it with a couple of brads. So I'm just making sure that everything is, there isn't anything that's going to flake off by utilizing my fine sanding paper. I'm going to get this into place and I'm going to go drill my holes. So now that I have my embellishment ready to go, I haven't put my brads in yet, but I want to decide how I'm going to attach it to my composition notebook and what I am going to do on my composition notebook cover. And I had in my fabric this old tea towel that I had put in and rust stained when I did my last batch of rust staining. And I thought, how appropriate is that? So I'm going to tape off my binding on the composition notebook, pull out my yes paste, and give the front cover of this composition notebook a thin coat of this yes paste. And I want to use this hotel key card to spread it out and make sure that every little inch is covered. And I'll just put that into place. And there we go. So now I'm going to flip that over or open that book and just wrap this up like a little gift. This is a very thin piece of cotton. My mother used to make these tea towels out of, I guess, a muslin cotton fabric. I'm not exactly sure what it is she bought raw, but she would cut them out and hem up the edges and applique pieces that she cut out of other fabric on it or embroider on them. And every birthday, every Christmas, we all got tea towels and pot holders that she had made. And I cherish them because she is now gone, but some have just worn out. So rather than toss them, I have brought them over to my studio to recycle and use in other applications. And I'm going to get this all folded up and glued into place. And then once all of that glue is dry, I'm coming back with the texture paste and hitting that fabric to bring in more of the color that is on that mason jar lid, was my thought, and to kind of make it more cohesive. And we do have the rust stain on there, so I want to preserve that. And I do want to add in some of that peacock blue color to the front of this as well. But I'll start with this little rust. I started with the brown. Now I'm going to Put a little bit of the rust color on here. Then I'm using those tools that I always have handy, which are my fingers. And I had another piece of the tea towel that I adhered to the back of this composition notebook as well. So the front and back are both covered with the same thing. And now to put in some of that blue. And I'm kind of laying the mason jar lid on there to see where we are. That looks a little stark to me. And I'm not what I would say 
happy with this at this particular point, so I'm going to put a little more brown in. Darken that up a bit. A little more of the rust. I think we are coming along. We're getting a little better as we go. A little more blue. And I'm starting to be a little happier with that. I want to take my stays on ink pad and go around the corners and kind of define the outside edges of this cover and bring in some of that darker color. And I really want to hit those corners kind of hard to kind of pull those corners, corners in. Now we'll hit that mason jar lid with the stays on black as well. I'm just going to kind of go over the whole thing. Also going to go over this little embellishment. And give it a little highlight with the black as well. And now to kind of preserve this cover, I'm going to cover the whole thing in a coat of this Mod Podge hard coat. And I'm doing that front and back. So I'm going to let this front sit and dry. And once it is dry, I will flip the book over and do the same thing on the back. And I'm also going to give the mason jar lid a nice coat of that hard coat as well. And now that everything is dried, I think I veered off and worked on a couple of other projects for a while. I actually think I did the three little notebooks in between maybe. I'm not exactly sure what I worked on, but I let this sit for a good time to make sure that it was nice and dry. And I am coming back with another little piece of that uh, tea towel that I am not going to do anything to. And I have just glued that into place. And then I pulled out my little tin of fabric scraps and have a piece of lace and a piece of canvas that I am going to incorporate into this front. And then I shall put the mason jar over the top of this fabric. So let's glue that down. And I'm just using glitter glue to glue this fabric in place.
And I have drilled the holes in the mason jar and attached my little embellishment with two small little brads. And I have a drill press in my shop. So I take anything that I have to drill, I take out into the other part of my studio where a lot of my jewelry equipment is, and I drill those holes. I also, I thought I was gonna glue this down and I did glue it into place, but I also glue, uh, drilled four additional holes into the mason jar north, south, east, and west around the outside edge. And I will poke a hole through this book before I put on the inside end sheet or the inside front cover end sheet. And I'm gonna pop brads through each of those holes, top, bottom, left, right, north, south, east, west, however you want to refer to it. So it has two, two ways to be attached, a little bit of glitter, glitter glue and, and secured with brads. So I am now happy with the front cover. Let's get those brads into place. There, there goes the one on the north side. I'm gonna poke my hole with my craft pick and just pull that brad through and open up those tongues on the brad. and spread those out to keep them in place. And I will do that on all four locations. And there we go. So everything is in place. Let's get out any sheet that we have dirtied up. And get ready to put in the end sheets. And I am just pulling out from my scrap bin of paper. This is some green paper, packing paper uh, that I still have a little bit of. And I thought, you know, this works well with the color theme or the color scheme on this journal. So I am trimming it down to the size I need for the end sheet. And I'll keep all these little scraps because I will probably need them and use them to make sure I get the inside front and the inside back cover. I'm gonna wad it up and give it some nice crinkle effect and then lay it back out and use my mixture of Elmer's glue and water to adhere that into place. I'm just rounding off the corner with my crocodile there. Use the half inch side to round that off. And now that I have that down in place, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a coat across the top. And where I've torn it a little bit, we'll just place another scrap in to get complete coverage on it. And we'll let that dry. And that completes this journal front to back. And the mason jar lid, I think, turned out to be a pretty sweet embellishment on the front of this composition notebook journal laid on top of the lace, utilizing that tea towel and adding some of that finnabar texture piece to it. So I hope you've enjoyed. Here is a playlist for the rest of my altered composition notebooks. I hope you will join me. Once again, anything that I've used in the videos you can find over on my Amazon store. I do make a small commission when you purchase off of that store, but it does not increase your prices. So thank you very much, and I shall say bye for now.